Uh, thank you, thank you very much for the invitation. It is always interesting to be with colleagues coming from abroad to discuss uh, problems of common interest. Unlike Japan, I didn't prepare anything in Italian or in any other language, so I am going directly to, to speak, to think, and try to think and speak in English on the basis of the, uh, the presentations we have uh, today. Uh, it is always interesting also to remark in, in the content what has been said today, because we are uh, dealing with uh, different systems, different cultures, dealing with the same problems, and in the end reaching the same solutions. Uh, in the end, also, this is also something interesting for the researcher interested in, in the study of uh, uh, private international relations. You, you see in the end that the way the, uh, the relations are, are governed find a legal solution coming from, from the bottom, uh, in the end they reach more or less the same solution. In the end, it appears to me that are not the institutions uh, which are created uh, to govern uh, a certain aspect of uh, the social life or the legal relations uh, affect the way the legal relations are conducted. It is more uh, the opposite. Uh, the, the way uh, the legal relations uh, uh, develop and try to find a solution in the end is an element that comes before the, the institutions that try uh, to govern. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk about the situation of uh, sports arbitration uh, in Italy, uh, first because it is a depressing matter, and second because there is not much to talk on top of uh, describing the system of arbitration in employment related disputes, which is the, the, the main topic. Because in the end we had an attitude of uh, state courts uh, uh, dealing with uh, administrative matters that consider, everybody knows that, uh, that here we are talking mainly about, uh, not about uh, subjective rights, but only expectations, interest as to the correct exercise of public power, and therefore uh, we are not dealing with uh, subjective positions capable of being settled by arbitration. Uh, in the end, the, uh, the position of uh, the state administrative courts is to adopt a sort of self-restraint forced by the constitutional court uh, so that uh, the administrative courts, uh, uh, in principle, would not interfere with the, uh, the way the internal life of the sports bodies is conducted with respect to sporting dispute, strictus sensu. So they confine themselves to, uh, to hear uh, claims for compensation of damages. So if you have a, a wrongful mm, suspension of an athlete, the, uh, the administrative court would not reverse on appeal that decision, but would consider uh, whether the decision was legitimate only in the, uh, in the exercise to consider whether uh, compensation for damages has to be awarded. From time to time, it is true that uh, the administrative courts tend to, to, to forget this. It's only 10 days ago, I think, that uh, the uh, Consiglio di Stato, the, uh, the highest administrative court in Italy, uh, stayed the execution of, a, uh, of a, an anti-doping uh, decision adopted against a football player, uh, Mr. Cuccioni, what been sanctioned, and then uh, there was a request for the stay, uh, dismissed by the first instance, and then on appeal, in audita terra parte, uh, a president of uh, the Consiglio de Stato decided to stay the execution and allow the player to, to, to play, even though it is, he is still suspended. Uh, 
The point uh, I would like to, to make with respect to, to sports arbitration, therefore, is not linked to Italy, but to the international level. Uh, for one good reason, uh, first of all, uh, uh, in 2020, yes, uh, Giorgio Colombo was saying uh, you will have Olympic Games in, uh, in, in Japan and therefore the Court of Arbitration for Sports will set up an ad hoc division. It would not be the first time in Japan because also already in 1998 at the Winter Games in Nagano you had the second and the first one, the Winter Games, ad hoc division established. So, CAS had already an experience in Nagano, only in that, at that time there were not many, uh, many cases, uh, and that time only four awards were rendered out of five proceedings because two were consolidated. And one was, was rather important at the time, it dealt with the uh, principle of legality because it was about a, a snowboarder uh, who had been found positive for a cannabinoidis, uh, marijuana, and at the time uh, that substance was not prohibited under the then medical code of the IOC. And therefore there were discussions, it was only a, a, a substance under control. So there was a discussion on whether uh, a sanction could be imposed on the, uh, on the athlete in a uh, not clear situation and the, the, the panel found that it was not possible uh, under certain principles of predictability and uh, correct application uh, of, uh, of the law. The, the Court of Arbitration uh, for Sport uh, has been challenged several times over the years, like I just mentioned. Uh, uh, one issue, uh, one uh, famous case that went through uh, the German courts and related the, the arbitration clause, the validity of an arbitration clause that was imposed. And maybe uh, this matter will arise again in Japan at the time of the Olympic Games. Uh, it is interesting to know that that, that matter related with doping. The Pakistan case was a doping case. Uh, it is interesting to note that, that at the first instance the, the court of Munich said that the arbitration clause is not valid and therefore the uh, International Federation could not obtain that the, the action brought by Mrs. Mrs. Paxton be dismissed uh, because it was imposed uh, in principle. Then uh, the, the tribunal dismissed in any case the action brought by Mrs. Paxton because Mrs. Paxton had started the arbitration at the Court of Arbitration for Sport and therefore could not claim later on that it was not valid because she took advantage and also only post facto she, she said uh, that the, uh, the arbitration clause was imposed. She had not tried to go in, first, in front of a Swiss court or another court in breach of the arbitration clause. She started the arbitration, she lost, she went twice to the federal tribunal, lost again, and then she started okay, years after a case before the general. The general. The German court. On appeal, there was an issue relating to antitrust because it was said that uh, the arbitration clause was imposed by a, uh, an entity exercising a dominant position in the sport matter, and therefore it was invalid because it was re the result of the exercise of the sport matter. It went to the uh, Bundesgerichtshof, and then the Supreme Court said an important thing, in my opinion saying that, okay, maybe you can uh, see that the arbitration clause is imposed, but what is the alternative? You have to, you can go before the cause of every state uh, taking any, uh, any different decision to defend their national heroes. And second, it is not possible to see an opposition between doping related matters between the athletes and the International Federation and the Federation, the sport governing board. Because in the fight against doping, the athletes 
and the and the federation are on the same side. There is no position between athletes and the federation. And this is very important because you, you could not say that uh, the uh, CAS has a, uh, is dominated by the international federation against the athlete because in doping related matters, everybody is on the same side. This matter is maybe closed. There is still a case pending before the European Court of Human Rights by Pakistan against Switzerland. Uh, I just wanted to, to make a reference to something very recent. Uh, another attack uh, on the CAS. Uh, and the, 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 the feelings are highlighted by the reaction that appeared in the social media after this event. I'm talking about the decision rendered on appeal by the uh, Appeals Court of Brussels, uh, the 29th of August 2018, so very, very recent. It, it is a, a case relating uh, to uh, an action started by a, a Belgian club against FIFA and the Belgian Federation relating to the prohibition of third party ownership. So it is not possible to have someone, an investor, owning a player uh, and uh, playing for it. This is prohibited under uh, the FIFA rules. There is a, 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 a Belgian club, Serang, and uh, a founder, Doyen, that started, lost a case at CAS and then started again uh, proceedings before the, the, the Belgian courts. FIFA said that there is an arbitration clause. Uh, the Belgian court said that this arbitration clause is not valid. This conclusion was said, taken to be as a, a blow on CAS, saying that CAS is no longer to be there, should be uh, deleted and uh, replaced by something different. This was in, in uh, Twitter and all other social medias that apparently are today the way to express also legal opinions. Uh, but if you read the decision, you do not find this. In the, in the decision, which might be also interesting for the least of the story, by the way, uh, there is only a very limited approach. They say this arbitration clause is not valid under Belgian law because the definition of the dispute cover is too broad. Uh, under Belgian law, you need to have a specific legal, legal relation included in the arbitration clause. The open-ended definition of uh, uh, disputes that could be referred to CAS is too broad under Belgian law and therefore the arbitration clause is to be considered to be uh, null and void. This has nothing to do with CAS, but the reaction that you could find in the social media and in the, in the press was uh, to take the decision as a, a Another green, uh, another red card shown to uh, to uh, to cars. Uh, I see, and I'm relieved to see that this attitude would not find followers, uh, as you, you call the users of the social media uh, in Japan. And this is also good news for the upcoming Olympic.